uh, introductory and uh, I'm very honored to share my uh, experience in the past years. Let me pull out my, can you guys see this uh, presentation front page? Um, somebody give me some feedback. Hello? Yes, we can. Okay. okay. Uh, so the topic today is about whiteboards and um, I'll, I'll share my experience on how to use it to uh, organize uh, in-class discussion. But, but uh, I, I want to change the title, I mean the scene a little bit. I, I removed the online part because I think other three um, people will talk today and later today and tomorrow will share their experience in how to make the videos, how to organize the videos online and uh, what I'm going to share today first, actually, is that once you have these online courses and the students learn these videos by themselves, what you need to do in the class or what you need to do when they are not looking at the video. So my, my solution is to use whiteboards and to organize uh, discussions. And uh, before I start, I want to make an advertisement. I'm not sure the video is still on or not. So this, this book is available right now. And I know, I, I'm not quite sure uh, um, whether you guys know, it, it's the shopping time shopping time in China right now. The Gala Double Eleven is on. And you might you might buy things from Taobao, Alibaba, and uh, you might uh, transfer them to your home, home country. So but at, at this time, you maybe you are considering buying this book because what I'm going to introduce is mainly in this book, but they are in Chinese. So if you can read the Chinese, I highly recommend it. So yeah, the, the advertisement. So let's get to the topic. So what I'm going to do is first introduce the idea about active learning. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure you guys are familiar with active learning or not, but it's a, it's, it's a method to organize class activities. So there are definition for that. So uh, it's not the attitude of the students. All the students in the class are eager to learn. So we can assume that the attitude is pretty good. So what, what I'm discussing later is how to use the method approach to emphasize things I think it's worth emphasizing inside class and uh, to improve their learning outcome. And uh, as uh, written on the slide, as you can see that that's a, it's an engaged learning process. And uh, students not only need to listen, write notes in the classroom. Similarly, uh, when, you, when they are doing video, they need to do something. They need to discuss. They need to interact with each other. And uh, I, I want to emphasize that. So it's comparing to the traditional methods, which is passively listening, listening or making notes. And uh, if uh, the class, the school is open, then uh, a teacher will stand in the podium and uh, maybe 100 students will listen to you. And uh, as an expert, you are, you are uh, saying all the things that the students need to remember and that they just accepted it. But uh, at the, this age, most of the class are online, so I would uh, put these words into it. So uh, even even the in the online method, the students still are passively accept the knowledge you teach. So it's not active learning. And uh, the, you need put homeworks in between the videos. You need to organize online discussions. There are methods to do that. And uh, also, you can make subgroups which one way of doing online things, and maybe you need to you do you in pause, and I'll, I'll use pause later today. So I, I think uh, active learning is very important to improve the learning outcome. So how how we should do that? And uh, I, I learned this active learning from um, Justin Professor Fendels a couple of years ago, uh, actually five five years ago, and uh, he he just um, introduced the idea to me, saying that if the student uh, the teacher is lecturing the green dots on the screen and all the red dots are students and the blue ink, the blue ink are the knowledge as you can see and they are dumped into students brain and very quickly they, they went out. The student maybe only have like 2% or 20% right after class, maybe 2% after year. The, it's, it's very poor. So what's the 
right way to do learning for students, you should make pipes. You should connect students with each other. So maybe the teacher still still pumping knowledge into the student's brain, but because they are interact, so the flow out of one student is going to another student. Of course, he is also accepting some other students' blue ink or knowledge. So using active interactive learning, the learning outcome is greatly improved. Uh, it has been proven by my many methods, many methods, and I'll show some data um, later also. So the, the way to do learning, I think um, more appropriate is active learning. And uh, because this um, this, course, this this sharing is about online videos and uh, blended learning, so I want to make uh, clear that it's two two way. Blended learning is some parts of the class is in the classroom physically, and some parts are students by themselves and uh, looking at the videos or audio, listen to the audio online, learning basic knowledges. And uh, it, it, it's it's not a diff it's it's a different idea as the active learning I just introduced. So one way is blended learning. You use both video and the physical classroom. Active learning is focusing on how to organize mainly in the physical classroom. Also, there are ways to do online. But what I'm going to share is mainly in the ways to to do in the classroom. So they are they are not conflicting each other, and I think we should use both. And especially in this pandemic and. Uh, in the past uh, maybe semester, I, I have the um, online, totally online, but I organize discussions based on principles in active learning. And I think it's very effective as well. Not as effective as classroom. I think the best way is still for students to see each other and uh, for students to see you, teacher. Let's go back. So today's main topic is about using whiteboards and uh, using the whiteboard is to organize discussion. So here is a photo I took in the spring of 2015. On the left, as you can see, my mouse is pointing to some heads. One, two, three, four, each head. Each head of the students is looking at my um, blackboard or my PPT slide print um, using a projector. So that's the first class of the semester. and. Uh, I was doing a baseline testing. I want to know how much they know about cell biology. So I gave them questions and asked them to give answers and write them down on the boards. And the later that semester, I totally using this method, completely using this method. And here showing one white board. At the top, you will see names of the students. It's a like signing. If you're missing this class, your your group will not put your name on it. And uh, because the board is seen between the students, so there are no cheating. And um, so I use that for uh, collecting signups. And as you can see, the black parts are the original answer, and the red marks are the um, corrections after I explained uh, or after the discussion. So. They, they have that uh, on the boards and they can take a photo of it and save for later. And also they need to take the photo with the name to uh, submit it to the teaching assistant for the sign up thing. So that's in 2015. Uh, students here are the second year undergrads. And so they have one year in class already. So in 2018, the fourth semester, I took another picture, also the first class, baseline testing. And these are just the graduate from high school and enter into our college. And in the first class, I let them form groups randomly and ask them questions. And immediately they took my approach and have the discussion and everyone is discussing. Not, not like the first one, because first one, the, the fronts of the PPT is a little small, and I was asking them to listing many things, so everyone need to check whether they missed one or two. But here, a very basic question, very simple. So uh, you can see they, they memorize my question and they make the expressions. 2018, four, and uh, now it's a photo I took at the end of the semester, and everyone is smiling. So in 2019. Uh, we change it to another kind of classroom, which uh, you can see. Originally, I used these whiteboards, which is carried by students every, well, not every day, but between before the class, they need to carry from 
uh, transfer the, the whiteboard from um, one place to another. And then I, I switched to a classroom which all the boards on the uh, wall are writable and you can just use markers to write on it. So inside, actually, there are only four whiteboards and uh, some of them are behind the students, but one is always here. And we took the photo here and it looked like everyone know each other and they're all smiling. Also, I'm doing the photoing. So I think the students are very engaging and I give some examples of what they are doing in the class, but not they are writing on. And so so the, 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 the next I want to introduce is how I organize the class. And uh, to organize this kind of classroom activity, first then you need to um, group them. So for, my, for me, usually the class size is about like 40 or 60, and uh, uh, I, use, um, I use cards. So they are 42 cards, and uh, you can allow, ask them to randomly pick one, and uh, the, the, the students get the same number or form a group. So four people a group. And I fix that group during the semester, and because I will give one or two group homework. and. Uh, the, the 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 homework will be uh, valued and uh, graded so they, they have to work very hard and on off the class together together because the uh, grade is the same within the class, within the group and i hope in this way they not only discuss or interact on the in, inside classroom but also because there is a homework group homework they have to work together off the classroom that's the first and the rendering is very important because students need to be feel equal or fair so randomly pick a card from 52 cards and the former group is the way I think is very appropriate for me. And some I discussed with some people and they suggested to do baseline testing, which after the testing, you get a result, then you form group with a mix of the higher score and the lower school students for them to improve between uh, helping with each other. But when I try that, um, the very good students actually after baseline testing, they, they switch. So uh, in, in Fudan here, we have the um, same topic and usually two classes run same time to avoid conflict between courses. So students have choice to, to pick my Tuesday class or the other one Wednesday. So after, if, if you have a, a baseline testing on the first day, and the first week of the first that the semester and they they took the baseline and know oh oh i don't know so many things i how i get a grade a so they all switch and for these uh very very um not, not good students and the update test they also will switch because they say this faculty will assign many homeworks because even on the first class they give tests so I, I don't like that. So the, they switch. So so I lose students, and uh, if if lose students, not not enough students in our class, then the, the discussion won't be very um, interactive. So so I I I, I stop doing that. But but if there's a way you have a fixed number of students, they cannot drop out. Then you may you may try with the baseline approach. I think um, this might might work better. But I have no experience for that. I was suggested by someone else, and because students drop out the class, then I, I, I didn't continue. Second is, it's very important to each group to have a very big whiteboard. So I emphasize big because things right on the board need to be seen between the, between the groups, not just within the group, and not just showing to you the faculty or teacher standing uh, at the front. So only a whiteboard will do that and uh, you, you need to, on the first in the flag first class to emphasize what they write on the board is show to their peers so to their classmates not show to me so a big whiteboard is very important also you need to provide markers and the napkins for them to change and um some, sometimes it's getting very um trouble because the markers get dried so I, I would, uh, before the class, I would uh, notice the student to make sure the marker that still has ink in it. And the, the third is the, the, the lecture and the, uh, po the portion of the lecture is usually about 15 or 20 minutes and uh, immediately followed by the discussion. So the way to do that, because uh, the reason to do that is because a um, neuroscience study has shown that uh, the brain, the focus time that the is only about 20 minutes. So no, no matter no matter who you are, 
you can only focus for 20 minutes. So if I lecture 20 minutes, I know that my students are tired. So why not let them discuss and have some rest? So that, that's the three key, I think the key uh, part, uh, or key um, steps to organize the discussion. So um, because I already um, talk about like 15 minutes and I have Chinese here, so not sure everyone will listen or will, will read, but I will create a poll right now in the Ding Ding and Ching Talk. So. I'm, I'm typing. Oh. Here, sorry. Yeah, sorry, this disappeared again. I need to move something onto the screen. Best. It's about specific format. Specific. Specific format of organizing the class organizing class. All right, anonymous and submit. Okay, here's the question. So do we need a specific form to organize the classroom? And what I just described, the form I'm using is using a whiteboard, and uh, and then uh, you need uh, make groups, and the groups have uh, assignments or questions to answer, and they they make uh, um, answers right on the boards, and then I I will value or may, maybe grade it or discuss based on that. So I think it's a format, and uh, I'm not sure what other people think about this, and. Awesome. All right, it looks like the internet is very not, not fast. It, it's slower than I expecting to collect the feedback. At least right now, two people agree with me. So maybe I can continue. Uh, we need a format. And the, the format I'm introduced or sharing today is whiteboard. whiteboard. So next, it's about, uh, do you have any other experience using other formats? And I originally asking is for you to type in something in the thing thing, but you can do that uh, along my, when I introduce other ideas. If you have other experience, other formats, please share with us using thing thing to type in. Uh, because I, I don't have many, uh text or, or 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 figures in the point point i'll explain everything on the point point so you can just type in and listen without looking at my ppt not my presentation so i'll continue so why use white rods so I, i'll share my uh, experience in the past year so let me introduce actually share you the two photos together first so this is a picture with black things and the red things and the black are the original answer and the, the red drawings or maybe characters are the corrections. Looks very organized and uh, very well I mean, written. There's another one. Uh, also the black, the, the black color is the original answer and the red color are the other corrections. And I think, uh, uh, it's an example that I don't want you to try. Why is that? First, so originally I was using group discussion or group presentation. So when, when the class is divided into 10-ish and each group will have a topic to share and I'll give them the material for sharing and they need to prepare it. And uh, once I, I lecture the similar topic, then at the end of that class, they are going to share five minutes or 10 minutes and we'll discuss a little bit. But when the groups are sharing, the other students are not listening to them because they are peers and they think what they're saying is too simple. Sometimes they just don't care because they think what teacher said is going to the final exam that are important, but what students shared are not important. And I try many ways to let the students who listen to participate, but the efforts actually 
didn't tell turn very good. So I was very frustrated. And uh, later, um, I, I, I noticed that uh, in the school there, they call I click a, a device which students can press on ABCD and give feedbacks uh, to me. And so I give the, the, the those selection questions like this pools we I did right now. If if you agree, you press A, and if you disagree, you press C, etc. And the problem with that is the student do not need to discuss; they just press their button. And I what I hope is for students to communicate, to interact with their, each other, but uh, getting response only getting. One student or student self's response is not purpose, and the good students give answer very quickly, and the the, the students not 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 very well follow, follow my class. They also get very quickly. They they randomly pick, and also their students will take a long time and trying to get everything right. So it's a, it's a waste of time. I although I get many responses and I know who is good. But I, it didn't improve student interaction or engagement between the students. So I, I think um, I later stopped using that. And in the 2014, uh, Justin came to our school and gave lectures on active learning, et cetera. And I learned from her, him. And uh, we also discussed what approach to solve my problems in teaching. And he suggests just use whiteboards because you don't need a fancy laptop or projects very expensive ones just the whiteboard and based on his experience these cheap whiteboards actually just do the trick so i started using it and immediately the first class the first week of the semester the effect was very obvious and they have something to write and what they write on the boards represent their owner or their their results and uh, well valued by their peers so I immediately saw the value of using it and studying, trying and improving, also trying to uh, talk, share with other faculties and uh, until now, like today. And there was an accident that is in the fall of 2016 and uh, my classroom was very far the, from the place I store my whiteboards and also there are no elevator. So it's kind of trouble for students to carry the boards into the new classroom. And uh, uh, that time I listened to some other faculties talk and they were using paper, papers. So I said, why not try papers? So it's a small piece of paper. Four students can see it and can write on it, but other students in other group, they will not be able to see. So I have to walk around within the class and check whether they are out there, they are they are answering or whether they are discussing. And sometimes I need to pull out the paper and read out loudly to other peers to, to listen. But because the paper only see by themselves or by me, they actually not very active. I think the most important part using whiteboard is to be able to see by other peer, other students. That is why I, I I I don't suggest you the white paper. Although the answers are very organized, sometimes are perfect, but but it's it's not good. Well, not 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 as good as I want. So to summarize quickly, summarize I have to divide students fixed group. They have a big whiteboard and uh, they will have discussion maybe fifty or twenty minutes every time. So what what they are going to answer? So um, how, how you design questions to let them to engage in your classroom? Because we already have these videos, audios, and, and all the knowledge points are in these videos, audios, in addition to their textbooks. So why you need, still need to do, uh, why you still need to lecture knowledge points? So we, I think there are three types or three levels of questions can be, can be designed and if appropriately and uh, to fit your um, learning a uh, teaching goal and the learning goal so the first level of the question i usually use is uh, is, is those questions i put, or put into finals and uh, students need to need to memorize some parts and put on put out exactly the right answer so i think uh, that fits to the learning it, they need to recognize these words and they need to be able to define some 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 um, thing written knowledge related to the words or, or the space or the selections. 
The level two is about applying the knowledge. Uh, because I'm uh, also a cell biologist, I want my students to be able to use the knowledge in the classroom, apply them in the laboratory, and make some authentic research and uh, enjoy the process. Maybe later also become a cell biologist. So how to train them or educate them to be able to use the knowledge in the book and transfer the knowledge into a laboratory to make discovery is very important in my class. And uh, create answers or, or create questions for them to do that or practice them in the class, I think it's very important. So I, I have the level two class, a uh, level two questions, but I also have level three. I, I call them knowledge rediscovery. I use the imbalance or, or the, uh, the, the reading the student had is much limited than us. So I know more. And I know this problem already solved. I know there's already theory about it, but students do not. So I create a scenario where those problems are initially found and create approach or tracks for students to follow to solve the problem and uh, rediscover these knowledges. And during that process, they may be able to learn how to create knowledge later by themselves. Also, they also need to evaluate and uh, to analyze. I'll give you an example right now, how these three levels of questions works. So here is a screen capture of my uh, cell biology, cell cycle, it's about cell cycle. So because it's a screen capture, so you saw the questions and the topic. It's the question and it's topic are in Chinese. So I'll explain it. So uh, in, in cell, cycle and uh, students to need to know dna will be replicated during the cell cycle because dna are replicated by proteins so you have many parts participate in the dna replication dna replication is semi conservative so you'll see these mother dna strands and these daughter red strands and uh, also you need you saw different icons different colors and, uh, i have letters put on it so what i ask students to do actually is to list what they saw on the picture they need to see a is the uh, replicating daughter dna strand for example the f is the mother strand they need to accurate to describe that also they have to describe the helicase DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase, et cetera. So I'm expecting a list from this um, question. Also, you may expecting words. You, you, you may have uh, um, empty space and I'll ask them to fill and to summarize. Sometimes also expecting drawings. So, so for these kind of recognized or defined level questions, students need to memorize key or, or essential knowledge they learn from the lecture or they learn from the video and they need to um, get correct answer, exact answer back to you. And I think it's pretty good for connection different chapters. So in each chapter, you may have different emphasis and for students, they, they may just focus on this chapter. By using these uh, questions, you may able to connect different chapters together. For example, when I talk to the mitochondria, I will connect to the energy or metabolism, just just example in my in my field. So you, you can imagine that different chapters connected by this um, level of questions. But as I talked speak earlier, I, I want them to be able to do research. So the level two are uh, very important. Level two is to apply the knowledge and to analyze uh, to analyze the data and uh, trying to solve it. So still on the topic of cell cycle, and you can see the question in English because I. I screen capture that from a textbook. And uh, briefly, you can see that in one treatment, uh, there are two lines going in period of the cycle. But after treatment, after treatment, you see there are no cycle. So I said, I ask, so what about the C condition or the D condition? What you are going to see? And I'm, I'm expecting student to draw, to draw something and get that feed, feedback to me. And because it's an immediate applying the knowledge, they need to know cyclings are cycling in the cell cycle, or during the cell cycle. And uh, it's required RNA and so uh, also protein. So 
well, with that knowledge, they, they should be able to very quickly give the quick answer. That's level two. And uh, on the level three, so it's extending from the knowledge taught in the class. And then in level three, I, I, I was trying to create a scenario where the experiments just done and the, the researchers are facing the result. Uh, they are going to synthesize some knowledge or hypothesis, maybe also theory from that. Also, reversely, if they want to have a conclusion as on this slide, they are expecting some result, but before seeing that result, they need to have anticipation. So, so it's very high level of learning. And um, in this question is because they are the conclusion from this experiment, I'm asking them, what they are examining and what they are expecting to see. Also, I put a reference at the bottom for students, if you're interested, they were able to pull out the original research article and to read. And uh, that's level three. Because it, I, I'm sharing my experience in cell biology, maybe general biology, and you may in different uh, disciplines, I think um, you, you can understand what, what I'm trying to do here because you, you can have the final level final exam level questions as the enter level and using that to um to uh, motivate them to look at your video before your class and also to review or uh, discuss uh, off the class to make sure they, they can answer level one sometimes it's graded for their um or class the grades and the level two and level three are usually open and not graded but uh, it's challenging for the students and if they get challenged and if they successfully solve it, they may experience happiness and uh, maybe the joy will motivate them to do research. So that's my motivation of that. So it's, it's, it's recreating scenarios. So uh, how I implanted uh, these three level questions in the classroom. So here is a, a list of all the slides, thumbnails of my slides. It's on the topic of cell cycle. Hopefully you can see these small letters here, South Cycle. And uh, as you can see, there is a whiteboard icon. Oh, I use the icon to remind myself. I I'll show that later. Uh, I so maybe I can just go back here. So I put these, this uh, square above uh, another frame to, to remind myself there is a whiteboard discussion topic because, because I, I, I was maybe doing something else and then five minutes before the class, I enter the classroom and I, I know everything. And if I talk so directly, I may, I get, may just miss the, miss the design the question to ask students. So I, want, I need to remind myself, there's a question for students, you need to stop because you already talked 15 minutes. So I put these kind of icon in the slide to remind myself. Also the color, the, all, the, all these, um, Purple color is for students to participate, and uh, they they familiar. They they know after one or two class, and so that question came after about like thirty slides, but there are two summaries, so actually about twenty ish slides. If you careful, you may see what I introduced in slide of 18, 18, slide eighteen. It's the it's the essential or the or the key events during a cell cycle. And then I lecture 15 minutes and uh, I forgot what I just said. So see, I, I, I said to my students, so could you help me to re remind myself what the key events during a cell cycle? So it's level one, level one. Memorize what I lectured just 15 minutes ago. Then here are the level two questions. So I expecting the students to draw figures. And it's a level two, so they need to read and understand the experiments in these gray uh, figures. And then synthesize, maybe uh, apply the knowledge to draw a graph. But because it's a level two, I didn't or I do not expect students to be able to do level two questions immediately. So here I introduce the experiments, explain and uh, let them teach them how to solve a level two question. Then immediately I give another level two, which is uh, experiments and ask them to do that. Similarly, I explain this experiments and the results and then ask them to do the level two. 
So uh, I think you should not expecting the students or most student, most student in your classroom will not be able to do level two or level three question immediately. So you need to give them chance. Even between chapters, you may be in this chapter level two is different from the other chapter. So just to remind yourself, uh, every student, or, 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 all the students are, are forgetting things. So you need to remind them how to solve that and uh, let them repeat again and again. So that's very important. And you may also notice this question. That's the level two, because they already have practiced two level two questions. So I immediately give another level two questions. So let's continue. But uh, this question is also is referring to the knowledge I taught a couple slides ago, the, the cycling characters of the cell cycle related, uh, cell cycle cycling proteins. So I, I expect they will be able to do that. Then here it's a level three, mostly it, it, uh, after a, a while, and uh, they go deep into the key knowledge points and they be able to do the answer the question. But uh, here, another example I want to emphasize is there are two level, actually three level three questions. And uh, so there's a question, question part is gray, and uh, they have to read and understand and uh, give answers on their white balls and then i pull out the below part which is the answer why i'm doing that is because it's a connected three figure it, it's drawing from three figures in a research paper and they are connected that the logic are, are flow so i want them to be able to solve one and for students not getting it, they didn't be able to catch up. So it's for them to catch up. Everybody is on the same starting line again, solving two, starting again, similarly solving three. And for students, oh, I also provide the original research paper for them to do, to check later offline. offline. So I, I'm not expecting all the students. I hope half of them will follow, but other half they need to read more. So which I provide here. Okay, 40 minutes. Let's uh, let's have summarize. Summarize. I summarize here. So after I organized the group and I have these well, I think I well designed. It took a couple semester to to have all three level ready, and uh, to educate the student to be able to do high level of learning, which is analyze, evaluate. Excuse me, and create. So now I have another pool. Okay, this is much faster. Okay, yeah, because there's a window which is uh, taking off my focus and uh, uh, the pool last time it created taking some time. So the question in Chinese I typed uh, English in the Ding Ding is about uh, token. So uh, in Harry Potter series, uh, in the Hogwarts world, when they transfer from one place to the another, they have to attach to a token and they immediately will transfer. So I I I I visualize my whiteboards as tokens, and the, the token is for students to rely on to represent themselves, and also to showcase their own discussion results. And I think, yes, I need to put a vote to see the answer. I think um, it's very important to do for for them to do something to to have something to rely on because I I want them engage. If they just have the books or they maybe just have their own papers, they do not have a common thing to to rely on. So I emphasize, I emphasize actual whiteboard as the token for teaching and learning because they have the token in the classroom and they have to present their results on the whiteboard, just like the token to transfer them to a higher level. So using this approach, they know what they to do, they must discuss and they must uh, present and uh, they must engage and they must active learning and then they all have a better learning outcome. That's why I'm thinking. Of. But it looks like some 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 of you are not sold yet. Yes, buy the book. 
Okay, next, actually next one is about uh, text feedback. You may type in other things you are using in the classroom, maybe other valuable or, or very uh, elegant uh, device or things that you think you help the teaching and the learning process. But I'll quickly go through, I need the timing running out. And uh, here that I will quickly share the experience of, of my, my um, feeling about one talk, uh, one speech by a Harvard fellow in 2018 during their present, present uh, inauguration. And uh, he talked about uh, college experience will transform students' life, open their minds, pursue, motivate them to pursue truth and spark discovery further will serve the entire world. So I would uh, like to emphasize into two words, which is truth and excellence. That's exactly what uh, President uh, Bacall uh, said on 2018. I think it's the value of our, well, our job, which is the value of the higher education. And we need to put that goal or that uh, goal in the, in the course design because the course or the class are the foundation of the higher education. So in order to do that, we need to have a very clear course learning goals. And uh, for example, in Salbar, they need to memorize things. They need to give examples related to their natural or normal real world. And they need to explain, evaluate research, and they need to have curiosity of advanced research because it's exactly right in Chinese for my Chinese students. And I hope these words actually matching the goals of the entire college or the entire higher education and let the value of the entire education reflect in the classroom. Timing is right out. To do that, you need to do integrated course design. We also have some uh, topic on that. So you need first to have learning goals, you have, need to have design, um, learning activities and you need to have assessment and evaluations. And what I shared today is mainly about in-class in class activities. And I, I strongly suggest you try to use whiteboards. And it's not only good for the lecture style serial based classroom, but also good for experimental classroom. As you can see, the black is original recipe, one, two, three, four steps, nine steps. And the result is not good because I made them, it's not good. So they need to optimize by the red steps. And here it's some um, quickly showing things. But here is also two pools if you, you want to have some feedback during the last 10 minutes. So what do you think about um, listening to my sharing and uh, what's your difficulty there? I, I specifically using English and uh, Chinese to memorize me. I'll give you time to, to write down. At the end, I want to give the story. What, what, why actively sold me? It's because Justin, but also because there's another word called scientific teaching. Basically, you collect the data during your teaching and uh, to to demonstrate or to show that this approach works. Their finals are good and they participate more active or authentic research. And there may be more research paper also by undergrads came out and they have better competition results that's the scientific way to value our teaching and uh, scientific teaching also is a very big topic and there's the paper i think you might interesting to read is by um, pnas Paris national academia science of usa 2014 it's about in stem normal lecture is orange and uh, then they use active learning approach immediate go up but you may notice that what they are doing is to reduce the failure rate to dropout rate. And what I share today is actually to motivate students to pursue excellence. I think both are the same because we want the student to do better and use whiteboards. So this I'll stop and uh, I introduced or I, I made other advertisement and here the reference you may look at. I also have other English videos available on this website. So that's it. Questions? Uh, there are only polls here. Hopefully, they, I could go through some other thing. Uh, there, you can find more information on the um, 
on these 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 are the these are English uh in English and these are in Chinese and also some videos on the website is in English. Okay, any questions? You can maybe just open the audio if you want to ask questions. Uh, I would like to ask a question. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, I'm speaking from Cambodia, from Royal University of Phnom Penh. I, I just want to ask you, um, currently we uh, use the uh, like teaching material like the uh, LCD to compare that uh, with the uh, fiber and uh, LCD, uh, which one is uh, the best um, method for, for teaching? For the oh. university student, the, 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 your audio is dropping out. Can can you repeat your question or somebody listen? Can, can they repeat the question? ICD is about ICD. LCD, LCD. A projector. I actually. I didn't get the question. Can sample somebody help me? What what's the exact question? Which one would like the best method for the teaching with the use of Bible and uh and uh L C D projector? Because in our see we use more Bible and also the L C D projector. It's L C D LCD, LCD projector is on the slide. I don't know if you, you saw it on the slide presentation. I'm very sorry. The, the, the audio is going on, in and out. So I, I, I didn't get the four words. And uh, if, if anyone can give me some hints on the question, then I, I'll be able to answer. But I didn't get the question. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, okay, no uh, I don't know how because it is new the being tall. I cannot rise. Yeah, I don't know where I can rise the question. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, maybe other people can uh, can ask question, uh, but I will send uh, to the to you like that, okay. Uh hi uh, hi Hello. Yes, how can we 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 take or we write the message um on or charting on the Bing talk? <laughs> oh, how can you write? Okay, I think you just uh, find a box and uh, type in. I, I'm not sure. I'm on our desktop, and uh, maybe it's a different version on the. Oh, okay. Maybe question should write down because yes. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Somebody, somebody will be able to uh, write the question. Yeah, the intercourse, uh, interactive course design is a very big question. There's a, the, it's a very thick book on it in English. You may be able to find. Yes, I, I actually done with my presentation. So, if uh, you have question, you may ask in the chat, and I will be able to answer in text. My lecture is done. I mean, I I'm putting the slide at my thank you. I I thank you slide. Yes, Faust is the one I didn't introduce today. Okay, thank you for Professor Tai. And now I will end the meeting, and we can take a short break. And